So in the last episode, you learned about something called abstract classes, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about something called anonymous classes. So yes, we're gonna talk about another type of class, and I hope it's not going to be too much for you with too many different types of classes getting learned in a row, but we're gonna talk about something called anonymous classes today because it's not really that heavy of a subject. It's actually a fairly simple concept. You just sort of, need to see why it's simple to, to sort of get to know. So as you can see in front of me here, I do have a example that we're going to go through. Now, before we start talking about what anonymous classes are, let's actually talk about what a regular class is. So with regular classes, I would usually go in and create a new file. I would create a very simple class in this case here called simple class. Now, in some cases inside our websites, we might need to just create a very simple class that we only need to use once in one place inside our website. And in this sort of example, it would actually be more beneficial to use something called an anonymous class because anonymous classes don't get stored inside the memory of our websites. So it is less heavy to load when it comes to uh, do, doing things inside our websites. So going back inside our index page, or at least my example here, you can see that I did go ahead and just sort of show how we would usually do it with a regular class. I would load in or include the class file. I would then create a new object based off the class. So I would instantiate the class and then refer to the method that I want to use inside the website. Now with anonymous classes, we can do all of this, including creating the class in one place. And doing this will not store the actual class in memory, meaning that once we create the class and store it to our object, it is going to delete the class again straight afterwards, which is kind of neat. So going down inside the anonymous class example here, you can see that I went ahead and created a new object variable or container. I set it equal to new class, and this is a keyword. So we do need to write class in order to do this. I could also just go ahead and not include the parentheses here, but if you do have a constructor, which we've talked about in the past, which is when you pass in information into the instantiation of the class, then we would actually need to have parentheses here. It doesn't really matter whether or not the parentheses are there or not if you don't have a constructor. So just for maybe sake of habit, just go ahead and include parentheses every single time. Um, so what I did is I created a new class, at least that's what I defined here. Then I wrote curly brackets, and then I did the exact same thing as I would inside my normal class, which is included my properties, my methods, I can use constructors in here, I can use static methods, I can do all sorts of things like we would usually be able to do using a regular class. Now, like I said, once we create this class and assign it to this object here, then we delete the class afterwards. So we only use this in one place inside our code. So this is not going to exist anywhere inside our website again afterwards. After creating this object, I can then go ahead and reference to different properties or methods or whatever I might have inside of it using the regular way we'd usually do it. So in the same way as I did up here with a regular class, I can just simply go in and pull out the information of our object. But just remember, all the properties and methods exist inside the object and the class has been deleted. So that is basically you know, the basic example here of when it comes to anonymous classes, uh, it has a purpose, which is to not take up too much memory. Um, again, just like with abstract classes and interfaces and all that, this is just tools for you to use in places where they are, might be more appropriate to maybe create an abstract class or just a normal class or something called an anonymous class rather than a normal class. So these are all tools that we will maybe touch upon again once we do some more projects in the future. Um, there's quite a few different types of classes here and it would be sort of weird to create one project that has all of them in them. Um, but it's something that I think is good for you to know about. You can always go back and refresh yourself on these different lessons here. So if you do need to at some point know what an anonymous class is, then just go back and reference to the video here. Um, so besides this, I think there was nothing else I want to talk about. This is quite a short video because we're just talking about something very simple, I think. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.